Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from Toronto. First, I would like to congratulate the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and the Hong Kong Canada Business Association on the organization of this year's Trans-Pacific Conference. Since last quarter, Hong Kong has been on the path of orderly and progressive reopening and launched the Hello Hong Kong campaign to welcome Canadian visitors and others to return to Hong Kong for business and leisure. Many of our friends already travel from Canada to Hong Kong for business events, including some joining us at today's conference. Hong Kong and Canada have rich and mutually rewarding relations in business, culture and people ties. I'm happy to share that being Canada's important trade partner for so long, the bilateral merchandise trade between Canada and Hong Kong increased by 23.5% from 2020 to 2021. On the investment front, Hong Kong is a large source of investment for Canada. Foreign direct investment from Hong Kong to Canada was about 12 billion Canadian dollars, or 70 billion Hong Kong dollars, at end 2020. The majority of the world's economic growth will come from Asia generally, and China more especially in future. Thanks to the one country, two system arrangement, providing a friendly business culture and systems for Canadians, as well as the central government support for Hong Kong outlined in our country's 14 five-year plan and the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area Development Initiative. Hong Kong will play increasingly significant roles as a global offshore renminbi hub, an international asset management and risk management center, and an international IT hub, etc. Also, a continuing expansion of the mutual assets between the financial markets of mainland and Hong Kong is to the great benefit of our capital market. Hong Kong can effectively and efficiently connect Canadian business to the vast market of mainland China and other parts of Indo-Pacific region. I'm so glad to see that the two women's networks within KenCham Hong Kong and the Hong Kong CBA have signed MOU to deepen the two associations' collaboration in trade promotion. Trade aside, Canada and Hong Kong also have well-established people-to-people ties and share sharp historical linkages. Apart from the substantial population of Canadian passport holders in Hong Kong and Hong Kong immigrants in Canada, I know the Alumni Association of Canadian Universities in Hong Kong are extremely active. This community is an essential bridge in fostering the Canada-Hong Kong relations as well. The Hong Kong SAL government has launched new institutional setup, including the Office for Attracting Strategic Enterprises, in short, the OASIS, and implemented an array of new initiatives to attract enterprises, investments, and talents to enhance Hong Kong's competitiveness. The package of new measures on talent attraction include the Top Talent Path Scheme, which is, de to design, which is designed to entice graduates from the world's top 100 universities, including six Canadian universities, on talents earning 2.5 million Hong Kong dollars a year to pursue their career in Hong Kong. Within Hong Kong ETO Toronto, we set up a dedicated team for attracting business and talents headed by Christopher Chen to take forward the promotion in Canada. We are honored to have Invest Hong Kong and Ken Cham Hong Kong support to develop the Hong Kong Canada Talent Metaverse to attract Canadian talent to work in Hong Kong. On an interactive virtual event platform, Ken Cham Hong Kong members or employers with Canadian connection can post Hong Kong job opportunities for application by Canada students and young professionals. You are most welcome to take part in this pilot initiative. I'm confident that Hong Kong's close bilateral ties with Canada will be further strengthened in the years to come with the support of Kenchen Hong Kong and Hong Kong CBA. I look forward to meeting you at a networking session and learning from the inspirational exchanges between our panelists.